Well, hello everyone. Guess is back. Back again. I'm not going to go into that. Um, <laughs> I know it's been quite a while, but welcome back to Fancy Geek. And today we're going to talk about Kubernetes. Now, we did talk about a app that was um, using Poetry and Uvicorn and was running Flask. But today I'm going to just create a new different app. And what it does, it, it well, I've created it in the past, so don't worry about that. It's just a task application. So what it does, and I'm going to run it right here, it just stands up a server, sorry, that was a peek into the future, in which you just get, give back whatever the person sent into your body and the request headers. This is just a troubleshooting type of app. It's just a echo of headers. All great, right? Now... As I promised, now we can run this and it runs just fine. And we, we have a repeatable manner to actually clone that out with this Docker file. But what if I want to run this into multiple containers, multiple places, multiple computers and actually expose that out, right? This is where Kubernetes comes in. So Kubernetes, I'm just going to give you a, you know, broad strokes into what it is. It is just this massive um, controller that is based on APIs that controls the infrastructure. Oh, actually, not this piece here. So it just controls your infrastructure. So what we call workers, right? We have master nodes in which they have your database with all of the information that you store that you want to run. And it's eventually consistent with that uh, by the operators slash controllers. So what it is, we go in, we tell using Kubernetes via API what we want your our cluster to do, it gets persisted into a layer, and then it just boils down into workers into what we want to run. So I'm going to show you first, and then I'm going to do a quick recap showing you how that went. So here's here's what we have. I have here, I'm going to stop that container, and it's going to be a, a terminal-heavy session, let's just say. And you're going to see that I have a Docker desktop environment for Kubernetes here. Uh, if you want to see how I do my terminal and show that all this cool stuff here, let me know in the comments and I'll do so later. But essentially what I did, I went into Docker and I've enabled into the settings the Kubernetes extension. There are many ways to run Kubernetes. This is not the only one. It's just simplest because I know you guys want to try this out later. And in here, you're, you can use kubectl commands to see what is running. And in here, I'm just checking what pods are running. What are pods, you might be asking? This is the minimal unit for compute runtime for Kubernetes. It translates as a controller. I'm going to go back here, actually. It, it translates as uh, you tell the API server, and I'm probably going to get a new page here and show you. So what we're telling is we have a container, right? And part of my drawing, Jesus, OK. And we want to contain that container. So in here, we have our echo server, echo server. And in here, we have our pod. Pod is then controlled by Kubernetes to run this echo container. That's essentially what it is, right? So Kubernetes is going to come in, talk to your computer. Hey, can you please deploy a unit of construction? that runs this echo pod with all your configuration. So this is what we're going to do. Let's define that, right? So let's go here. We're going to go into the um, cluster and we're in the default namespace. We can talk about namespaces in the future. But what we can do here is create a YAML file, which is our configuration file. Um, let me save that and call it a pod.yaml. And we can just say, hey, give me a pod. What I did here, there's an extension you guys can download later uh, in which you can um, have the Kubernetes schema already downloaded and you can see it right here. This is how it understands um, what to use to communicate with Kubernetes. This uses open API standards. So that's why it is uh, defining this JSON here. If you want me to talk about open API standards, let me know, I can explain how that works. But I digress. Now, we have that pod here, and that pod then can have a, a name, a label, so you can actually put some metadata here to understand how that works. And I'm just going to call it Echo App. Okay. Okay, that went a little too far. All right. The Echo App then is going to run using an image. Now, given that this is running on Docker Desktop, it shares the same registry. 
And because it shares the same registry, I, all I have to do is just grab this echo 001 image that I built in the past. So I'm gonna just call it echo version 001, label 001, tag actually. Anyways, and then you can tell it, okay, run in this computer, right, in this Kubernetes cluster somewhere, and you can give it resources. Let's not worry about that right now. And it runs on a port 8080. That's essentially it. You're gonna see that there's this squiggly line here that tells me that I'm, I'm missing resource limits and I'm re missing resources. So it, it, it just so happens that yeah, my editor tells me, hey, are you really sure that you wanna run this app without limits, right? Because the container can take over my computer and run as many resources as you want, but let's not worry about that right now. And all we have to do is just do kubectl apply to apply that configuration and pass along the file. Okay. I don't know what happened. My Audacity recording stopped, but restarting here. So yeah, I just apply that pod YAML configuration. And now because it is applied, I have that pod running. All I'm doing here, KGP, this is an alias. So if I do which KGP, you just kubectl get pods. So kubectl get pods, and it shows the pods that are running. So now this pod here that I've defined with this container is running and is running my Echo app. So if I go in and say, hey, Kubernetes, uh, with kubectl, uh, get me this pod and show me the actual configuration that was applied. Now, this is really the cool stuff, eh? So you saw how minimal my configuration was, but this Docker cluster that runs my Kubernetes APIs tells me, hey, I've got that configuration from you. I've added some a few annotations, your creation timestamp, an ID here because it's stored in the etcd database. Remember when I was talking about that, right? The etcd database, that's what it all, it's all about. And because it was stored in there, it has to you know enrich that with more information. It, it knows which protocol to communicate by default it uses TCP, and it's just running that application. This is great, isn't it? Now, it is running, um, but where is it running? How do we know it is running? Um, how do we communicate with it? Uh, now, these are different things, and we're gonna get to that. Now, here, let's see what, what's happening. So if we go kubectl get pods, again, we see that echo app is running. And if we do kubectl logs, we can actually get the logs from the echo app, whoops, echo app. And in here, it's just gonna append, so it's gonna connect into Kubernetes, ask for a watch in the um, standard out and standard error of that pod. And it's just gonna append that to my terminal and stream that out along. And if you want, you can also use this flag to follow that. Now let's try to reach it. Let's see how it goes. It's not there, eh? So port 8080, even though I've connected here uh, in my pod, uh, even though this pod is running in my cluster and my cluster is running in my computer, it is not accessible. So what's happening here? So by nature, you remember when we were running Docker run, we were exposing port 8080 of my computer to the port 8080 of my container because it's a sandboxed environment. So it's a different network, it's different everything, even though it runs in the same computer. In Kubernetes, it's very similar as well. So we have this cluster that has this container image running with and it's exposed this container at, at the port 8080, but there's no way for us to actually reach it, reach out. Worry not. In Kubernetes, we can do something very cool, which is kubectl port forward. And you can see that I've done, done that a lot. And we're just gonna go to default namespace or just use the one that we're running right now. Now let's go to the echo, echo app. And now that we are in the Echo app, we can just say, hey, run in port 8080 local to run port 8080 do. Oh, there's no port, it's the argument, sorry. 8080 local to 8080 remote. And now it's forwarding everything from my host all the way to the other host in Docker, sorry, in the Kubernetes cluster. So now if you go back here and refresh, it's response, right? And if we look into, I'm just gonna open another terminal here to make it simpler. And now we do kubectl logs and then echo app follow. You can see that it actually printed out the headers of that request. Really cool, isn't it? So you can see I'm gonna send a few requests and it works. Awesome. Now, what is the purpose of this, right? 
what is the purpose of just sending out um, my app to run somewhere else? Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? In here, oh, get nodes. I only have one node, really, which is this virtual machine that runs inside of my uh, Mac laptop in which I'm running these pods, running these containers, and it manages it. But let's say we go to uh, this fancy local K3S cluster that I have, and I'll go, I'll go look into the number of nodes that I have there. You're gonna see they have a bunch. And even cooler, I can actually see, uh, top nodes, how much CPU memory it's using out of those. And when I tell it to run something, it's going to choose and balance those resources accordingly. I'm going to get to that. This is probably for a later video. But, all right, now I know it's important to low, low balance all, all these things. And um, I know now that Kubernetes deploys these things, but I'm running just one pod. And what happens, let's say, if I go here and go to kubectl delete pod echo app, what happens? It's gone because we've defined a pod. And if you remember, a pod is the minimum unit of runtime in Kubernetes that manages that. But so what is the power of Kubernetes if ever, anybody can just come in here and, and delete your pod, right? Now, this is the really cool piece that we can use operators for. And this is why Kubernetes is so powerful, because it's just, you know, a bunch of operators that do cool things for us, right? So now we have here, let's say this is a computer. and we come in with Kubernetes and kubectl, and we use something called a deployment. The deployment controller would then generate pods that are copies and manage those that ensures that you have a number of replicas as configured. As simple as that. So instead of running just, just one Echo app, you're gonna run a bunch of Echo apps. And because we have a deployment controller that Kubernetes manages, and we have a desired state of running a number of containers and replicas, it's gonna just ensure communicating with this API server that it's gonna always be running. How do we do that? I'm glad you've asked. So, in here, you see there's a pod. It's essentially just a container, an image, and a port. And now what we can do, I'm just going to do a deployment. Deployment. And it's very similar. Echo app. The difference here is you define a deployment in a different API in Kubernetes. This is very important. And we're going to tell this API that we want a deployment. And in there, what we're going to do, let's forget about the selector for a second we're going to give it a template of what we want those pods to be. So these pods here are going to be our Echo app that runs our Echo application version 0001. Let's forget about resources for a second as well. And they're going to be accessible at port 8080. And now if we go in and apply that you know, pod at YAML, sorry, pod YAML was the same name, but essentially it consists of the deployment stuff. So it is essentially the same stuff, right? And, and cool thing, you can just keep applying here to ensure that, hey, do I have the latest version of my file up and running in the cluster? So now we've given the cluster, hey, I want this desired state of running this container with this image, at least one replica all the time. And now Kubernetes is going to be ensuring that this is happening. So what it does, it, it creates then the pods based upon that configuration. And you see that it appends into the suffix a few IDs. What are those? So I'm going to give you a sneak peek into the background. Essentially, Kubernetes goes into, so it deploys a uh, deployment. So you can ask here, hey, show me my deployments. And you can say like that. And it's going to show you that we have the Echo app, the same name that we have given here all the way at the top. And we can see that this deployment then creates a replica set. And a replica set then is a replica controller that is managed by the deployment controller that ensures that that version of the app always has one desired 
replica. And it, and it, it keeps up to date checks of state to see how many replicas we have. And then that replica set generates the pods. That's how it goes. Now, if we have this controller, what happens if I delete the pod? So, delete pod echo app. I'll give you a second. What do you think is going to happen? Yes, if you think about that, it's just going to get a new one really fast. That's essentially what happened. But that app that was running, it's gone. So if you had any um, runtime application that didn't save something or commit something to a database, it's going to be gone. So it's important for us here when we're running into containers that we understand they're ephemeral. Essentially, they can be gone all the time and nothing is persisted. By the nature of deployments, you can make it work in other ways in which they're gonna, not going to be. But for the sake of simplicity right now, just imagine containers, they can die anytime. But they still run quite well and they're still available. And this is how you ensure that you always have a number of replicas running. And before I go, how do we make it that it runs a bunch of replicas? Just like this. So let's say one replica of your application is not enough, and you run a, want to run 10 of those. Sorry, not one, 10. It is just as easy to tell Kubernetes, hey, scale that, that out. It's going to create that application, scale that up, and it's going to tell you in the events that it created those apps, it pulled the images, and it's all auditable and it's all organized and it's all clean. And that's why I believe Kubernetes is the best way you can run your containers. All right, so there are many things that I wanna tell you about Kubernetes. Let me know if you like this video. And if you do, don't forget to subscribe and, and drop a like down below and um, let me know what you wanna see later. I think that I'm probably gonna create something to show you how to expose those apps, but that's gonna be for, for another video. Anyways, thank you everyone. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.